This is my 2000 Jeep Cherokee. I've wanted a custom bumper for it for a while, since there's no way to mount a winch or recovery hooks on the stock bumper. I decided to design a bumper that could be cut entirely out of flat sheet metal on a plasma cutter and then welded in place on the truck. To start with, I pulled the stock bumper off the truck and took measurements of all the dimensions, and I actually fully replicated the stock bumper in SolidWorks so that I would have something accurate to check clearances and fit mounting holes and that kind of thing. So in SolidWorks, I went and modeled the whole bumper as a sweep of a 2D sketch, which works pretty well because I think the original bumper is an aluminum extrusion. And I went and just carefully measured out the distance between the mounting holes and the, um, the height of the bumper. And from there I was able to model up this 3D solid version of what I wanted the new bumper to look like. So this, this was just made using cuts and extrudes and is one solid piece. And on top of this, I went and used the SolidWorks sheet metal tools to actually do both the convert sheet metal and creating um, base flange tabs for some of the more complicated pieces. So you can see I got the whole thing modeled up, including mounting slots. Since I was using PathPilot, it was super easy to just export a DXF out of SolidWorks and open it up in the conversational DXF importer. I saved off each file as G-code and used conversational feeds and speeds to get the torch height control and fee rate dialed in for the material. Some of these pieces were pretty big as you can see here compared to the work envelope of the machine so it was actually a bit tricky to get them all nested into one sheet but I did make it work in the end. The actual plasma cutting was pretty uneventful. I was able to fit almost all of the panels into one sheet of 14 gauge steel and the finish on the parts was actually great. I didn't have to do any cleanup at all before welding them. You can see the edges came out super clean without really any dross or slag. So a friend and I got them all fit up on the bumper. I held them while he tack welded them with the MIG welder. These clips here are actually kind of partway through the process. You can see we got the top and bottom plates for the bumper just bolted in and then started tacking these front and side panels to those. And that was a pretty good way of doing it. The only thing you had to be careful with is getting the angle on these front panels correct. Because if you didn't, the farther down the bumper you got and the more panels you put on, the bigger your gaps got. But we got things pretty well lined up, and I think the biggest gap we had was around a sixteenth of an inch, which is pretty good for a 3D object made out of flat sheets. The welding here on the underside got a little bit spicy. Um, but it wasn't too bad. We got the tacks laid down and the bumper was actually pretty solid. We went for like one tack every four inches or so and after we'd got the side panels and this bottom lip tacked up we didn't really need to support the outer edges. Before that we did kind of have to have a hand on it to prevent it from sagging down. This part here was a little bit ill-advised. I think I should have probably welded these end caps on with the bumper off the Jeep instead of uh, trying to tack them like this. We had a little bit of meltage on the fender liner, but it was nice to have everything held together in one piece with tacks before I took the bumper off for the finish welding. So you can see I actually like the way it looks with all the tack welds on it. So I brought it outside and went and fully welded all the seams. This was a bit of a process. It took a while. The welding was pretty easy, but one thing I wish I had done, and I'd recommend for anyone who replicates this design, is just go ahead right away and fully seam weld both the inside and outside on each seam. I only did the outside of the seams at first and then went straight to grinding, which I ended up regretting because I ground through a few of the welds and had some panels separate. So I ended up going back and welding the inside of all the seams and then 
going back with the flap wheel like you can see here and grinding all the seams down. So it would have saved me some time if I had just done it right the first time and I think the whole thing is a lot more solid because of it. Grinding wasn't too bad. I think I went through one full 25 grit flap disc doing this bumper and you can see here we got it all ground down and did a test fit and after doing all the seams we'd had a bit of warpage so it no longer fit over the mounting brackets so I did a bit of uh, percussive persuasion on it here to get it to fit. Both sides needed a little bit but it was probably eighth of an inch or less. With that done, we gave it another try, and it slipped right on really well. I was super happy with the fit. We didn't have too much warp from the welding overall, and the fender liner fit right into it exactly like we wanted. I test fit the winch right here, and I was super happy with the way it looked. It, it had that kind of faceted appearance that I wanted, and the winch was positioned just below the the grill, which was good because I didn't want it up too high and blocking the air intake. The one thing I decided we were missing though was some clearance holes on the bottom side of the bumper to access those fasteners. So what I actually did, and this is a nice little trick, is I snipped off a little piece of two and a half inch exhaust tubing and you can use that as a super easy template to hand plasma cut some nice holes. So I went and did that and cut some clearance so I could get at those fasteners for the winch from the bottom side. And these came out really nice. They just needed a little bit of um, cleanup with an air grinder afterwards. After that, the next thing up was just hitting it with some primer and letting it sit for a while. It was super windy this day. It's hard to see in the video, but I should have taken this straight into the garage to paint it. You can kind of see the the paint stream is getting deflected all over and it was a real pain. Luckily this was just the primer coat and it, it was pretty easy to touch up and get things smoothed out. So after the primer was on, took it into the garage uh, just to get some wind protection and did the first coat of flat black. And I actually decided after spraying this on that it was not going to be thick or durable enough. I, I wanted something really heavy duty for this because it was going to be getting dinged up and scratched up quite a bit. So I let this first coat cure onto it. And then I actually took it outside and mixed up a batch of Farm and Implement paint. Uh, this is just some low gloss Krylon and I mixed this 16 to 1 with a catalytic hardener to get some extra durability in the paint and I think this was a good decision. Look at that pour by the way. I thought I was going to destroy our kitchen scale. I thought I was buying a new one of these after that. But I used about 16 ounces of paint and then one ounce of catalytic hardener and I think that came out pretty well. So I went ahead and started brushing that on. The reason I was brushing was just I was sick of spraying paint and the wind was not working well with me. It was, I have an HVLP gun, but it, it was blowing the paint all over and I wasn't too concerned about surface finish. So I went with the brush and the paint finish actually turned out pretty nice. The one mistake I think I made was not adding a bit of reducer. So actually about halfway through this process, I did add one ounce of reducer to the paint mix, and that came out with a really nice brushable consistency. You can see after I painted one of these panels, I, I went over it with the brush and tried to kind of get the brush strokes all going in one direction just to have a bit of consistency. Most of this, the brush marks actually smoothed right out as the paint was curing, but just in case they didn't, I wanted them all to at least be in the same direction. This paint took absolutely forever to cure. I think it said like 24 hours on the can, but I ended up leaving it for like five or six days and it was still soft to the touch. You could easily dig a thumbnail into it. 
But after I left it for a week or so, it, it turned out pretty pretty hard. And since it's been curing now for about a month, it's, it's actually um, holding up really well. It seems super durable. So you can see I went and test fitted the bumper. I was pretty happy with how it fit. Got some stainless hardware and mounted the whole thing up, and then it was time to put the winch on. I ended up being super glad that I had gone and modified the bumper to have these holes for the um, hardware access on the bottom, because otherwise this would have just been absolutely impossible. Went and torqued everything down, and it seemed like it was pretty sturdy. Before I started wiring anything up, I gave it the old stomperoo test just to uh, make sure everything was going to stay on, and it seemed like it was. Luckily, the XJ has lots of space in front um, around the radiator fan where you can run these power leads, so I just routed this kind of around the very edge of the radiator fan shroud. Once I had it connected up to 12 volts, that was pretty much it. I connected up the winch hook and spooled some cable out to give it a test, and everything seemed to be working well, so I was pretty happy with it. One thing you do need to do with a new winch is spool the synthetic rope in under heavy tension to make sure it gets really nice and seated on the drum. But first I went and tucked in all of the wheel well shielding. You can see it made it up to the bumper really well, which was exactly my original goal. So I took it out to a parking lot near the house and did some beauty shots, and I think it looks pretty good. The ground clearance is about the same as the stock bumper, but I think the approach angle is a little better. And I just generally, I like the faceted look that the sheet metal gives you. After the paint was fully cured, we took the Jeep out into the National Forest to take it out on the first few trails of the year, and it did super well. Unfortunately, uh, the XJ really didn't want to get stuck on anything, so it was hard to find a good place to actually test out the, the winch bumper. Right now it's got open diffs front and rear, which is something I'm planning on changing, but it really does handle itself pretty well crawling around on the forest tracks and that kind of thing, and generally just splashing through mud, which is kind of what the uh, off-roading here in Wisconsin is like. So we eventually just parked it in a big mud pit and let it pull itself out just because we wanted to see how the bumper would do. And it worked really well. I know some people are kind of concerned about using the stock bumper mounting brackets to mount aftermarket bumpers, but they seem to hold up just fine, and there wasn't anything that indicated it was going to rip off or something like that. So if you've made it this far, thanks for watching. Um, go check out the DXF files for this project on GitHub if you'd like to make your own. I'm releasing them open source under their Creative Commons license. So you're totally free to make your own copy of this, and if you do, I'd love to hear from you. If there's any specific aspect of this project that you'd like me to go into more detail on, I'd be happy to. Just let me know down in the comments section. Thanks.